Assalam o Alaikum. This film that you're about to see is more about a journey of all those people who've been inspired by the Yasmin Lari solutions. You'll see that in the film. What are those solutions? But all of us need to shift our focus and understand that today, in the challenges that we face because of climate change, women are, and children are the most vulnerable. And unless we join this effort to radically shift the way we work, it's going to be too late. So I hope that you also get inspired because there's been enough talk on this and it's about time that we all live our values. Putting together two wounded nations on one page is by no means easy. Today, after nearly half a century since the creation of Bangladesh, Pakistan's renowned first women architect Yasmin Lari has brought the future generations of both countries together for a common cause. It's about alleviating poverty and improving the lives of the poorest of the poor by building affordable homes for them. It's about tying the knots. Numerous devastating disasters in Pakistan was a calling for Mrs. Lari. And when I was practicing as an architect, it never even occurred to me that this was something that an architect could even deal with or had anything to do with it. I thought this is not my concern. It was the pathetic living conditions of IDPs in the sweltering heat of Swat and Wardan that brought out the genius of the Lari architect. And then the only material I could find available easily was bamboo. Now the Lari Octagreen became a worldwide success. The Yasmin Lari Zero Carbon Channel put out numerous training videos, but the masses still remained unreachable. Then came the dreaded COVID that shut down the world but opened unprecedented opportunities for others. Um, I was so intrigued, I was like, okay, Yasmin, up. Could you prototype these with women specifically? I just, again, provoked her and said, could you do it in Bangladesh then? And she said, again, without a shadow of doubt, yes. Good morning, Karachi, and good morning, Dhaka. Welcome to the first day of the start of the Gender and Zero Carbon Workshop. Girls of both countries are busy building Lari Octagon. The best part of it is that it is being streamed live. In the midst of Karachi's busiest centre lies the famous Rahaguzar, the quaint colonial street restored by Mrs. Lari's Heritage Foundation. Nevertheless, it is at first for the young architects challenging and it remains to be seen if it will affect their concentration or confidence. Like these men were, have to come here and support us, like you guys are doing a really great job. But they were like, yeah, if these girls are doing this thing. That was not fair, but girls can do anything they want. I have energy, I may look like I am thin, I am skinny, but I have enough energy and I have enough strength to do like heading things. Are we up for it? Yeah. This is for women empowerment because we have so much more strength than we think we do. I didn't expect myself to be hammering so much to nail a lot of panels, to build a foundation and to actually erect the bamboo heart. I, I couldn't believe that girls could do it. I think everyone should have an open mind when working in a group because everybody thinks differently. Everyone has different perceptions of how things can be done. So all of those thoughts and those ideas are welcome inside a group and they should be welcome.
and I've been a part when, when we started drawing the plans, so seeing the plans and then the small model and finally the construction, I'm supposed to be feeling very tired but I'm very excited. This is actually my first time working with bamboo and I learned a lot of things. From cutting to shaping to kneeling. So hopefully we'll be learning more. I think we, we, we can build a bamboo building by ourselves now. Bringing together students from, in this case, Brack University and, uh, and connecting then uh, the communities, the students, um, architects to um, similar communities, architects, students in um, Pakistan and in the UK and I've just seen that there's a live stream with Pakistan which is as the, as the Pakistani group is building their own structure so again amazing. And it was hard because the strongest bamboo in Bangladesh, Borak bamboo, is very strong and they were very tired doing it and then when they were tired in five minutes time they would do a dance or music or you know bamboo dance or, or another kind of dance and they're technically savvy of course and they're savvy in now savvy in a bamboo construction how's it going Oh, it's going really well. Like this architecture is not all about designing in in, in, a, in an enclosed space. It's it's the experience that we get here. It's it's working with your own hands, getting the getting the skills, the craftsmanship, getting it done by your own fingers. If you can see the they they are acting like a mazoo right now, maybe a laborer. But you know, at this level, the skill it's gonna entertain them their whole life. Look at these pictures. So at University of Lahore, we invented the whole facade. Then we added the string art just to make it more lively and more Ardhan, close to comp complementing the whole, uh, whole Ardhan language. While the girls are busy, 3,000 miles away from London, Harriet's of Interbau International is sorting out her side of preparation for the big days in the capital. We know the colours that beauty is sending but it might even be nicer and more realistic just to, to send the photographs. And there are concerns, but at the end of the day, diplomacy wins. So that uh, edging should also be the same color as the last color, which is green. Right. Do you know, Harriet, this entire segment can run as a fantastic uh, conflict resolution segment for the world? <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with conflict? <laughs> The program has wider implication and is not limited to just the two countries involved. The girls here have gone through intensive training through workshops and the Lari tutorials were instrumental in starting a shift and a movement to reach out to the masses. It's very inspiring to see this project, all these young ladies working so hard in building this beautiful structure gives us hope for the future. Who are the people that we are supporting here? They're young people, they're emerging young women that we're supporting and, and the London element came in or the UK element came in because essentially we wanted these women to have the opportunity to, sh to kind of go and experience building there and also for the UK women, um, the students to also participate together in this exchange, which we thought would be incredible. Uh, I find the fact that young women are working with their hands, uh, they're learning how to cut the wood, how to nail it together, to do this work that is so intrinsically thought of as male, um, women are doing it. And I think it's also interesting because in the urban context, women don't do this work, but women in the rural context do very hard work. The Lari Octagreen is an iconic structure for populations in disaster-prone countries and is being adapted and gaining support all over the world. Our adjustment was just a little bit, which is raising it up, raising the plinth up one and a half feet to two feet, depending on the rain in the context, and also uh, extending the tile roof or the straw roof or the thatch roof uh, almost two and a half feet to, for rain protection and also for giving shading. 
In Bangladesh, the project's impact on working with communities has been instrumental in upscaling the project, thus covering larger populations. This girl from the um, informal settlement, or what we call slum, who, would, who is a tiny little thing, but so full of energy, and but it good energy. She also motivated others. She's quiet and just works. Uh, our student cut one bamboo. She would cut three bamboos, same time. ছোটবেলা থেকেই পুরুষদের ঘর বানাতে দেখেছি তো এই প্রথমবারের মতো আমরা সব মেয়েরা মিলে ঘর তৈরি করেছি নিজেকে খুব আত্মবিশ্বাসী মনে হচ্ছে যে না আমিও পারি ঘর বানাতে পিপল देयर আর পিপল হু ডোন্ট আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড ওয়াই উই ওয়ান্ট টু প্রোটেক্ট হেরিটেজ এন্ড ওয়াই উই ওয়ান্ট টু নট গেট রেড অফ অল দিস ওল্ড বিল্ডিংস এন্ড হ্যাভ নিউ গ্লাস কংক্রিট স্ট্রাকচারস ইন देयर প্লেস দে নেভার আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্স so so we will maybe face criticism that we are playing with mud in granary square but i think people who are thinking women and people who uh, know what this is all about will appreciate what we are doing and this is not just about uh, karachi this model is for the whole developing world you know jahan jahan aapne urban development ka jo sustainable model jo hai this this is what it is one women who's going there for instance her name is champa and she's uh, riding a rickshaw in in that area why because yasmin lari sort of promoted her funded her and taught her how to drive a rickshaw so she's doing that in addition to making these chulas so it's a mixture of women empowerment of uh, 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 things the zero carbon city chula claimed internationally is not only a zero carbon marvel but also a strong symbol of empowerment and it shows how traditional wisdom has answers to many climate challenges you know we have such strong traditions and we have what i call ancient wisdoms which have been there for centuries and there's so many solutions that actually have been practiced by this part of the world because you know in the light of in the or in the, the face of really limited resources or non-existent resources how do you manage things that women now do not have any boundaries it's a global village for everyone the boundaries lies only in our heads it's going to give them the confidence that they need in their later life but also how to manage certain tasks when their parents are not around so parents need to give their children the freedom to make decisions on their own selecting and then mom them really realize, realize in the concluding open air seminar Both countries had the opportunity to debate the solutions and management of limited resources and their implementation. Because it's the people who are barefoot, who are, as I say, our fellow travellers today. I think we're doing it to a larger scale. I think we will. I think everybody has to think of homelessness, of people who can't afford things. You have to look at, you know, their climate migrants, their conflict-driven migrants. There, there's just so much disruption today in the world. that unless you can reduce the cost of construction and reduce the cost the, the planet has to pay for it both the actual financial cost and the ecological cost unless we look at it uh, we will not get anywhere Uh, uh, I can't believe